the purpose of this module is to show how a complete uh, battery charging system uh, can be modeled in SPICE and simulated in SPICE. The system consists of a PV uh, panel followed by a buck DC-DC converter and a battery at the output. So first a little bit about uh, uh, modeling of the, the buck converter. Uh, usually uh, one would take a buck converter and model switching behavior in, in SPICE. Uh, instead of that we are going to uh, show here how an average switch model can be obtained. Uh, that average model is much more convenient in terms of speed but more importantly it's much uh, more useful in terms of the ability to um, generate for example small signal frequency responses in a complete system. Uh, so the idea behind the average switch modeling is to take the switch components in the converter, um, pull them out into a switch network, uh, and uh, um, define the ports of the switch network. In this case here, uh, port 1 corresponds to the voltage and current of the transistor Q1, and port 2 is represented by the voltage and current of the diode. Uh, rectifier. Then uh, we proceed to uh, sketch the voltage and current waveforms for the two ports and uh, simply perform averaging over a switching period uh, to find the average value of let's say V1, I1, V2 and I2 and then finally establish relationships between the average port uh, voltages and currents. That step is uh, shown right here. Um, with a little bit of algebra, we, we show that the uh, average port voltages V1 and V2 are related through the ratio equal to D prime over D, uh, where D is the duty cycle applied uh, to the switch network. And similarly, I2 and I1 are related through the same um, ratio D prime over D. And so the average switch network uh, can be described by a control current source on the output port and a control voltage source on the, on the input port uh, with the ratio D prime over D uh, representing the uh, conversion function of the, the switch network in the average sense. Uh, we should mention, obviously, emphasize here that this is the result that we obtain when the converter is operating in continuous conduction mode. Uh, so for the continuous conduction mode then proceeding from this basic result for the average switch model uh, we can construct a uh, sub-circuit uh, model in SPICE. The sub-circuit shown here is called CCM1. It's part of the sub-circuit library. It's called switch.lib. Uh, and in this case here, that switch.lib library includes the CCM1 sub-circuit model, which has one, two, three, four, five terminals. Those five terminals are shown right here. One and two uh, define the port where the transistor is located. Uh, three and four define the port where the diode is connected. Uh, and five is the port where we enter the actual duty cycle of the of the switches. Uh, important point to note again is that this uh, CCM1 model is the average model, not a switching model, and so uh, we are not going to apply here a pulsating waveform. We are going to apply a uh, the duty cycle uh, value that drives the switches. The sub-circuit implementation is, is just two spice lines uh, that represent the control voltage source and the control current source and the value is expressed in terms of the port quantities and the value V of 5, where V of 5 is really um, equal to the, the value of the duty cycle. And so these equations are exactly the same as we have uh, just derived for the average switch network. Now, when the converter operates in this continuous conduction mode, the process of deriving the average switch uh, model is exactly the same uh, except, of course, the, the waveforms are different. You know, here we have the set of waveforms that describe the operation of the switch network in this continuous conduction mode, 
and the, the process of averaging uh, the waveforms uh, over a switching period results in interesting um, results. Uh, here for the, uh, the port 1, this is what uh, in a on average models the behavior of the transistor in the uh, switch network operating in this continuous conduction mode. We find that it behaves uh, as, as a resistor. There is a linear relationship between the average port voltage and the average port current, and that re linear relationship um, is represented by a resistive component uh, where that resistance is given by 2L over D square TS. You know, don't be confused by D1 here. D, uh, D1 is the same as the duty cycle driving uh, the switches. So what happens on the diode port and the output port then looks like what is called a power source. So we find out that the, uh, the average value of the current at the output of the, the diode port is proportional to the power absorbed on the input port divided by the voltage across the average voltage across the terminals of the of the diode port. So these can be put together into an equivalent circuit model for this continuous conduction mode, but even better, we can have a combined CCM-DCM model. It's called CCM-DCM1. It's also contained in the switch.lib library that is capable of um, uh, representing large signal average behavior of the, uh, uh, of the switch network in uh, both the continuous conduction mode and discontinuous conduction mode. Uh, that decision is performed in the, the way the <coughs> um, controlled voltage source ET on the port 1 and the controlled current source GD on the diode port um, are evaluated. There is a minimum function that is used to distinguish one expression for continuous conduction mode and the other expression, the alternative expression for uh, this continuous conduction mode and the minimum between these two expressions is really will decide the actual value. It makes a decision whether the correct value is in this continuous mode or in continuous mode. There are two auxiliary, you know, the, there is a auxiliary circuitry here, in particular these two lines are important. Uh, those two lines make sure that the model uh, solution is such that the current flowing through the transistor is, is positive and the voltage across the diode uh, between the cathode and anode terminals of the diode in average sense is, is greater than zero. Uh, otherwise we can get non-physical uh, solutions that would not uh, represent the actual behavior of the circuit. So, so uh, these, uh, you know, several lines are contained in uh, the model CCM, DCM1, and that's the one that we are going to use to put together a complete uh, model of the system of interest. You will notice also that the, uh, the sub-circuit includes two parameters, uh, the value of the inductance and the value of the switching frequency. We do need to know what these values are because that's what is going to ultimately, uh, you know, be a part of the decision of whether the converter is continuous mode or discontinuous conduction mode, and those values must be specified appropriately for uh, the circuit that you you have. So the actual values may be different uh, in your circuit compared to the example that is shown right here. Okay. So here is the a complete circuit diagram of the complete system. Uh, we have on the left-hand side a PV panel model uh, that's shown here as a sub-circuit. It's inserted as a box, as a symbol for the sub-circuit. It's driven by a short-circuit current that represents the solar irradiation. That's then followed by a uh, average model of the the buck converter, you see here the buck filter components L1 and C out, uh, the average switch model CCM DCM1, and the parameters of that model are shown explicitly here. Uh, we just take here as an example default values of 100 microhenries and, and 100 kilohertz, uh, but of course note that those values can be changed easily for, for your circuit. Uh, it is further important to know that the value that you give as a parameter for the model must match exactly the value of the actual inductance you have 
in the rest of the circuit. Uh, the input filter capacitor and the output, output filter capacitor here are shown just as examples. Uh, surely the values that you have in your circuit are going to be different. And then finally, the duty cycle is driven in an open loop manner by a voltage source called V-duty. It has a DC value of 0.9. Uh, we are going to perform a DC sweep of V-duty from 0.1 to 0.9 with fine resolution, you'll make small 1% steps in duty cycle uh, to uh, uh, obtain a DC characteristic of the complete circuit. And in particular, you know, find out what duty cycle is going to give us the largest current um, charging the, the battery. Uh, notice that the battery is modeled simply as an ideal voltage uh, source. Uh, that model can be improved by adding uh, battery series resistance if you wish to do so. Finally, uh, for the sub-circuit model that is shown right here to uh, be recognized by uh, LTSPICE, we need to tell it uh, where the model is actually contained, and so we need to include a switch.lib through this uh, SPICE line right here. So, uh, click right here and run the and the result that is obtained right here is, uh, we can comment a little bit about. What is shown is in blue is the PV uh, voltage, right? This is the output voltage of the PV panel. And the result shown in green is the current charging the, the battery. The horizontal axis in this DC sweep is the value of the duty cycle. You know, it's shown as, as, as millivolts, but we understand the physical nature of the horizontal axis value is really the duty cycle. So, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't have units here. You know, this is from 0.1 to 0.9 swept with the, uh, you know, 1% resolution. Uh, so at, at low duty cycles right here, uh, what really happens is that the converter operates in this continuous conduction mode the current uh, taken from or charging the battery is, is relatively small. Uh, the PV panel operates essentially open circuited with small current loading uh, the output of the PV panel. And so the output of the PV panel is, is very close to the open circuit voltage. At this point right here, converter moves to continuous conduction mode. And as you increase the duty cycle further, you see that uh, the PV panel is loaded, the PV panel voltage drops down, and in the process the current charging the battery increases up. Uh, there is clearly a duty cycle around uh, here uh, that is going to result in the maximum current charging uh, the, the battery. Since in this case we model the converter as 100% efficient, that point is going to also correspond to uh, the maximum power point of the PV panel itself. Okay, so this is an example of performing a useful DC sweep uh, on the complete system. Uh, just to illustrate the, the value of this average switch model and, and simulation capabilities, uh, let's also show an example of how uh, AC simulation can be performed. Uh, um, uh, the assumption here is you're familiar with uh, SPICE uh, um, simulation types. Uh, when you set an AC value for an input source, uh, you're then capable of performing what is called AC simulation, which is really frequency domain simulation of finding small signal uh, frequency responses with the circuit. So, for example, we can look for the frequency response from duty cycle perturbation to perturbation in the uh, voltage at the output of the PV uh, panel. And uh, we do that from, you know, over with 200 uh, points per decade from frequency of 10 hertz to 10 kilohertz, just as an example. The result is shown right here. Uh, the LD Spice will, will display the magnitude response in dB. That's the, the blue uh, curve right here as a function of frequency on a logarithmic scale, and we'll also display the phase response in degrees, uh, of course, again, as a function of, of frequency. So just a, a quick example to illustrate the capabilities of using the average model for to find the frequency responses.